we're back with another pole maintenance video this video is mostly going to be lots of repots and top offs and then i'm also going to be chopping some and restarting and i'll explain to you what the reasons are behind those but let's get started because i have quite a few to do My goal in this video is to get to my Monstera at Ansonia Mint, my Majestic, my Splendid Strawberry Shake, and a Philodendron Florida Beauty, and there might be one more, but those are my goals. If I can get to those five, then I'll feel really good because I have been putting it off, and I almost put it off today again, but I really cannot wait any longer. These plants need it. It's been quite a minute since I last did my um, moss pole care video. I'll have to write the date, but that's when I first realized that I needed to repot some of my poles and it hadn't occurred to me at all whatsoever that I might need to repot some of those plants. And I've just been putting it off, but you'll see why I can't wait any longer. Like this needs to be done today. First up, it's my Monstera at Ansonia Mint, and yes, you are seeing this correctly. It has started to yellow off a lot of these bottom leaves, basically because I can't keep up with its watering and nutrient intake because it's so root-bound in here. There's so many roots in the pot, it's kind of hard to make out. Um, and I did consider chopping and making the top like the plant again and just kind of restarting like I did last time this happened. But I think that I'm just going to repot so that I can get leaves just a little bit larger before I do that again. And I am going to pot up together the original base of the plant because that does have quite a few leaves. Even though they're not upsizing as much, it'll help cover up some of this bald. So we're gonna get started with this one first. And I'm just going to, I should actually probably have a bin to pour all of the messy things that are gonna happen. I thought I was prepared, one second. The bin I wanted to use is actually being used for something else, but the lid is available. So I'm just gonna bring this on and off the table as needed. So I'm just gonna bring this out. It's thirsty also, like, I mean, I knew it. It was getting thirsty so quickly. I don't know why I put things off sometimes. Look at all these roots. I hope that you are seeing just all of these roots there's barely any soil left poor guy i'm so sorry and there's so many roots in the pole which i love okay so what size pot should we give him i was thinking about doing this this is like it was advertised as a six and a half. I guess maybe it is a six and a half. By the way, these were super inexpensive. They came in a pack of like 24. Like I have so many of this size and they were like 17 or 18 dollars. I'll make sure to link them down below. But yeah, I'm thinking about giving it this size, which is, it's not so much bigger in diameter, but it is quite taller. So let's do that. I have my aeroid mix right down here. Show you this is what it looks like, and I can link my recipe also. But I'm gonna be using this for all the pulls. I just like how airy it is for um, pull purposes, especially since you know you do water the moss pole, and should there any additional water get to the pot before the plant was ready for watering it's not going to sit there and cause any issues i'm also going to do my best not to disturb the root system at all 
So I'm just backfilling. This might actually be a little bit more base than I want. Oops. Let's start over. There we go. And don't worry. I almost forgot I'm adding the other one in here. I did this last time. So I'm actually kind of nowhere near ready to be potting yet. I need to handle this. So let's do this. <laughs> Set that aside for a minute. This might get messy because I need to bring it out of the pool and everything. Luckily, both of these are on the Russo Go poles. So they're the poles that they open in the front. And I should be able to get this out fairly easily once I have the pole all opened up. Did you see that? So how are your plant chores going? I feel like I'm so behind for spring. I feel really bad for my plants. It's just been, since Christmas honestly, I feel like it's just been so busy. One thing after another. Which busy isn't a bad thing, it's just busy. Okay. It's all opened up. I should be able to just, yep, there we go. I really do wish I had a bin instead of this. There's so many roots in the pool of the moss. I think Monstera and Ansonia Mint, this particular one, was like one of the first plants I put on a moss pole and it crept on so quickly to the moss. Really nice healthy leaves. Really I've been the problem in any and all of its setbacks because it just grows so fast. I can't keep up with its watering needs. Okay, so here we go. This is actually just one activated growth point from when I chopped it, but that's okay. For these purposes of wanting to fill out the pot, I think it works just fine. Now we're ready to repot, so here we go. Here is this. I'm going to try to Center, maybe I should remove the yellow leaves first so that I can see where the other one is going. I feel really in shambles today in this moment. Oh, all the way up here, yellowing leaves. How sad. I lost so many just now. Okay, that's okay. This one's going to. There's at least three, four more going on this big plant. Okay, so this is why we need you. Yeah, I'm just going to put this right down here so it can cover up some of the bald <laughs> almost forgot my go I know I keep saying this but I really need to decant this so that it's easier I 
I think maybe I'm feeling out of sorts or like so disheveled because it really been weighing on me that I had intended to this Monstera and it was starting to yellow and every day it had more yellowing. So hopefully once this is all done, I will be less disheveled. thing I forgot is my grafting tape but already even without it it's laying pretty good and here she is we'll water them all together at the end just for time saving efficiency purposes ugh yeah, I think this plant was just, it was weighing on me that I had put it off for so long and it was going downhill really quickly. And then especially, like, I have no excuse. This is the second time this happens to me with this plant where it was um, needed an upsize and I waited too long and I lost a bunch of leaves, so I know better. I just pulled my Splendid out and it actually does not need a repot. It's just thirsty so we'll water him moving on here's my majestic it lost these leaves while it was acclimating this was originally an import and it has upsized quite a bit i don't remember or i don't know if you remember me telling you that this leaf had come in super bleached because it was too close to the light well with time and less light it got some really pretty color. It is still damaged, but that's okay. It grows consistently, and I don't think that this actually needs like a bigger pot, but I wanna get it in a clear pot, so I'm going to just move it very carefully with minimal disturbance, hopefully, and yeah. So let's find the pot size. I'm just gonna use one of the ones that the Ed and Sonia I was in. I typically would like wash and sanitize all this but we should be okay the exact same pot size by the way that white one and this clear one my best not to touch any of the roots but here she is now in a clear pot where I'll be able to better keep track of what's going on with it. This Epi Marvel is actually the one I'd forgotten to mention at the beginning that definitely needs a repot so we are going to give him a larger and more steady pot. It is starting to drop some leaves because it's really root bound and again I can't keep up with watering and nutrients so let's find the right pot size i mean i hate to put it in this huge thing but this is the sturdier version i guess i could go here yeah this is probably more size appropriate so let's do that also, by the way, at this point, there's no way that I can keep bringing and taking that lid where I was dumping the soil, so this is just happening. 
So these are just the urgent pulls that I'm tackling right now, but I need to check several of my plants that I'll, like just other plants that need repotting. Like I know my um, Monstera ties, both of them need a repot. Um, ooh, let me get this, try to get this root. Split might not make it. There we go. Yay! I know both of those need a repot. My Monster Elbow is in desperate need of a repot. My Ficus Taniki needs a repot. Yeah, there's a lot. I can't think about it too much. I'll get really overwhelmed. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I don't want to mess with the root ball. this before but is anyone else just this messy also I do appreciate some of the tips you gave me like fill your pot or your moss pole over your bin but evidently for some reason I just can't do that and I forgot to add my goat as I always do but this is a hardy plant so it should be okay so here we go it went up probably like an inch and a half in diameter and like another two inches in height. So it should be happier here. You know why I also think I'm feeling like a little like disheveled and like frazzled is because it's later in the day. Like I got a really late start today. Um, but I'm actually, this is second to last pole that I have to take care of. So. We're really almost done. After this, it's like watering and you know, that's what it is. Okay, so this is a very pitiful philodendron Florida beauty. We unboxed this one together. It was part of like my plant shopping trans a few months ago or like at the beginning of the year and it arrived in not great condition and then I also filmed a like how I'm rehabbing it and it was doing okay, but Hunter, my dog, was determined to jeopardize the situation. He has knocked this poor plant over at least five or six times. Every time he's broken off several leaves, several of the times he's broken off the new growth point. So this is what it's looking like. So I'm thinking we are just going to chop it all the way back into individual nodes whatever has a decent looking leaf which it looks like might just be two of them we will put in water to propagate and then what doesn't i can just add to my prop box and see if that works and then i'll also leave like two or three nodes on the actual plant since it does have healthy roots and see if any of those also push out new growth points but yeah this is so pitiful feels so bad also blue dog problems any plastic item that she sees on the floor or within reach it's not like she climbs up to get anything 
but if it's on the floor or she can reach it she thinks it's like for her to chew on this is my second pair of scissors that she chews on and it's scary because what if she stabs herself with this that's like really scary so conversation for a different day let's get to this poor guy oh man he's worse than i remember i'm looking let's remove the grafting tape I don't think it's rooted into the pole at all, and I don't blame it. it. Hasn't had an opportunity for any kind of success, unfortunately. Okay, so I actually think I'm going to chop like all the way down here at the base. So there's two nodes left on the plant and this also sad looking leaf, but it's mostly green so hopefully it should provide good energy for the plant to grow. And then I'm also thinking I'm going to downsize it and just remove the pole for now. But let's take care of this first. Okay. So this is our bottom cut. And then maybe I should leave this top cut like this so that it has one leaf and then there, look, this plant wants to live. It's unfortunately just hasn't been provided with even the minimal requirements to do so. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do two cuts. It'll be, even though this one is, this is a bare node, I like the fact that there's this leaf to help it hopefully gain some good energy and root quickly. So I just brought, I brought this jar with water and this is where this is going to go along with the bottom cut i am going to clean the bottom cut a little bit of just these dry spots typically the dry spots you can just kind of peel off with your hands you don't need scissors so i'm just doing that gently and i'm going to place these in one of the clear boxes over by my laundry area the ICU. Hopefully they root. I was watching someone's YouTube the other day, I forget who, that was saying Florida beauties are really difficult to root, especially if you don't have aerial roots. So I hope that's not the case for me. Again, I think I'm just going to reuse this from one of the Adansonia mints. And we will transfer this. Oh man. Poor, poor plants. I know this already had myco in it, but I'm probably going to add more. I'm wondering if. Is this too small? I mean, it might be okay. The poor thing. Oh no, the end. Um, like the this was a cutting and the cutting is like wider than this so it won't work but we will add a generous amount of my go You're gonna laugh. This is like the exact same pot size, I think. Oh no, it is smaller. It's a little smaller. Okay, good. And also, to answer your question, you probably have is, I did try several times to move it from where he kept knocking it down, 
but my rehab area is pretty limited and everywhere I kept trying to move it, it was in a stand. He somehow managed a way to keep knocking it down. So I did attempt to move it locations, but now since it's smaller, it's also probably gonna go in one of those clear boxes just for extra heat and humidity and hopefully it starts pushing out new growth from the snow down here. The last poll we're gonna tend to today is my philodendron strawberry shake. I really got so lucky with the jeans on this plant. It's my dream strawberry shake. That said, as of recent, it has thrown out quite a lot of all white leaves. So you can see some bald areas over here are the all white leaves that it drops because it doesn't hold on to them very much or for very long at all. And it's obviously also grown significantly off the pole, but most importantly, it's the all white leaves that make me want to chop this. I also want to repot it because it does have quite a lot of roots in here. But yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to chop and prop and hopefully I continue to have this beautiful color because it really, I mean, I don't know that I've seen another strawberry shake with this beautiful color. Look at this leaf. Look at this beauty. Oh my gosh. It's also very thirsty, but we're going to take care of that in this video as well. So now I need to decide where I want to chop it and to be completely honest, I am not sure. So this is where it's dropped some of the all white leaves. I mean, I could potentially go as low as right here and then have all of this and then chop this into at least two sections. This leaf is all white, minus that one little speck in the center. This is hard. Sorry, quick battery change. Okay, yeah, so this is hard. I don't know where to cut it. Based on the beautiful leaves. Oh, but this one's gorgeous too. I actually... I think I'm just gonna do like one top cut. Is that really chicken of me? Should I be more brave? I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm gonna do one top cut. And the one top cut is going to have this leaf and two white ones. There's another on the way that hopefully is not all white. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't, yeah, I think I'm just too chicken. I can't do more. So, this is going to I'm going to chop right right above this leaf which is ooh, so hard to see this node oh no i think i'm gonna do above this leaf above this one which is just one node above okay so i hope you can see This is hard. <laughs> Typical. So this is our top cut and like I said, we have two white leaves and this leaf. Another one's on the way. Just gonna peel some of these petioles off. Or sheaths, petioles, sheaths, I guess, I don't know. And it's a little sticky in the center. It's okay. And I probably should just go ahead and get rid of this leaf now because it's not like it's providing any energy for the plant. I'm surprised to see that it, oh, it kind of is. I was like, it's not bleeding red like the pink princess, but it most definitely is. Okay. So. 
So while this is just drying for a second, a quick second, we're going to repot our plant. I have upsized to this once. It came in all cocoa core chips and I just upsized it using all cocoa core chips. But this time I want to try something new because I find that cocoa core chips are just not moisture retentive enough. Like it's thirsty very, very frequently. Okay, I don't want to mess with the roots too much. I'm going to use just a slightly bigger pot. It is probably a good like inch, inch and a half taller, but in diameter, it's maybe an inch if that. So what I'm gonna do is try some tree fern for the first time. So I'm gonna mix some tree fern into these cocoa chips I removed. I don't even think it's been a year since I upsized this plant slightly. So I do have some plants in tree fern, but they were purchased that way. I was speaking to my friends over at LB Plant Collector. That's who I have the plants that came in tree fern from. And he was kind of giving me the lowdown on tree fern. And you know, I think that everyone says like, for example, tree fern's the best, is the best. No, you should do an airy mix. But at the end of the day, you should, He. this is what he said to me. He said, I love tree fern. It's my favorite medium to grow. But if people are gonna use it, they need to understand how tree fern works and what it does. And actually that's what I typically answer or like something similar when people ask me about pawn. I love pawn for my alocasias. I feel like pawn is magic. <laughs> However, that might not necessarily be the case for someone that likes to water their plants frequently. I don't. So pond for me is the answer in that regard, in addition to its other benefits, of course. So anyway, so this will be my first time um, potting something up in tree fern myself. This is what the mix is looking like. And just gonna give it a small, I'm actually thinking maybe I need a little bit more. If you've never used tree fern, um, it's very fluffy, which I like. Okay, so this is what this is looking like. I like it already. I think it feels really great. I'm not gonna mess with this root ball anymore. Oh, but I do want to add my go. Here it is. Someday I will decant this and all my troubles will go away. <laughs> The plants I've gotten in tree fern, by the way, are just tree fern, nothing else. This is me just mixing it with the cocoa core chips because I, you know, this is what it was into and I wasn't going to be able to remove all the cocoa core chips anyway. So why not? I do like the way it looks. 
I mean, I really love the way my Aeroid mix looks, but this looks really nice and rich. I like that. Okay. I'm also wondering if I should extend this poll. Probably not today, to be honest, because I don't have any cocoa core chips ready, and I would have, yeah, that would just be an ordeal. Let's take care of the top cut that we are going to propagate. Getting a candle. If you don't know this trick, um, I'm about to teach you something cool. <laughs> I saw this once, this candle wax trick. I'm gonna have to, I will find it and I will know in the description who I saw it from. But my friend at Albi Plant Collector, Juan, also does this with his cuts and propagations. And the, ever since the first time I did it, I don't do it with all my plants, but I do it with like my Pink Princess, or like now I'm doing it with the Strawberry Shake. Basically, you use the candle wax to seal the cutting, and that's to avoid any potential rot, and it works wonderfully. So we'll just let this burn for a second um, so we can get some of the wax, and yeah. I think we have enough wax now, so I'm gonna aim you down a little bit just so that you can see. I don't wipe any of this off. I don't wait for it to dry or anything like that, and my friend Juan at LV Plant Collector said the same thing. He doesn't do that to his. It's worked for me, so that's what I'm going to do this time. And that's it. Sometimes I'll go one more time. Just kind of for good measure. And there it is. Now I will wait for the wax to set completely before I add it into its propagation medium. In this case, it's going to be perlite because I had such good success the last time I chopped my Pink Princess Philodendron. It just, it rooted so well and so quickly that that's what I am going to do this time. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. A good question to ask is if any candle wax will do. I tend to, I mean, I only have like all natural candles at home anyway so that's what i've used but i would be curious to know if it matters what kind of candle wax you use this is pretty set you can also peel it off once you're ready to pot it up if you wanted to i always just leave it yeah that's set okay so i'm gonna do it in perlite and a semi-hydro Just kind of tucking all the aerial roots in there. I'll water it and place a little reservoir, and she's set. So let's water them all through. I'm giving them all my nutrient-rich cocktail, except for the philodendron that is rooting in water. That's just regular plain old water. But everyone else is going to get a thorough watering in the shower, followed by my nutrient-rich cocktail. 
this is going to get plain old water in the reservoir and then they will go back to their respective spots i'm thinking i'm going to put this in my millsbo tall cabinet where the mother plant lives just next to each other so hopefully they give each other some encouragement to this one to grow really nice healthy roots and the other one to continue to grow those really beautiful leaves for today there's a lot more that I could do like some top-offs and some more watering on poles but I feel happy of where I got to and what I was able to accomplish today in a relatively short amount of time I don't know why I was just putting it off for so long I think because it's so messy maybe I don't know <laughs> but I'm so glad it's done a weight has been lifted and thank you for joining me it always makes plant chores so much more enjoyable when I'm sharing them with you thank you again so much I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon bye